Good day, and welcome to Boone in the Woods and in the Home, a weekly program that focuses on all things hunting and also things in the home, but not just in the physical, but in the spiritual as well. Hi, my name is Nathaniel, and this is my wife, Lisa, and we together are the owner and operators of Boone in the Woods, a hunting property management business that focuses on regular maintenance of our clients' farms, food plots, food plot seed, and mineral mixes, and much, much more. We're also the owners and operators of Lisa Boone Designs. I am a retailer for some artisan quality products that help you upcycle things that maybe you have in your home or things that maybe you find in the thrifting world. Whatever it is, I have all kinds of tutorials for you, teaching you how to use those products and helping you be successful. You can find all of my products and tutorials on lisaboodesigns.com. So last week we were talking about preparation as it relates to a believer and also to a hunter. And today we're going to continue that, but we're going to also be talking about redemption. I flip furniture. I buy old pieces of junk, maybe that somebody doesn't want, save things from the landfill, uh, things that people have gotten that are passed down and they don't want it anymore, or maybe just things that I find on Facebook Marketplace or estate sales, and I take them. They're usually ugly ducklings. Sometimes I get some really awesome pieces, but the whole purpose is I take it and I transform it into something refurbished, but giving it a new life. There's just something about that that speaks to me. And I love the process of taking something old, ugly duckling and turning it into a beautiful swan. Sometimes actually makes me cry, to be honest with you, because when I see the transformation or I think too much about like the process of transforming something, it really just reminds me of my own redemption story. When home improvement became really, really big on TLC and HGTV, I loved those shows. I would often cry because you, you know, for every makeover story, you got to see the behind the scenes, you got to hear that B-roll story of the couple that was getting the transformation and Usually it was a beautiful story and when they would cry and they would see the big reveal like I would cry I loved the big reveal. I love to uh, watch the uh, Renovation of a good food plot, you know. Oh, okay. I told you I'd throw it in there. All right So now when I was younger, I did not think that I was creative at all. I saw my mother do a lot of creative things and I thought she was creative and I, it, you know, I was really amazed by some of the things that she would do and she didn't practice creativity a lot, but every now and then she would put together an Afghan. She, she taught herself and she would make them for us, for, for herself, for um, our home, for, you know, whatever. She made me a quilt out of just an old comforter and some fabrics and she, she taught herself. She made like a 3D cake one time as a, a Christmas tree. And it was like, I was like, wow, like how did she do that? Uh, cross stitching. She just did a little bit of everything. And it wasn't all the time, but I knew that she was creative. Sounds like my mom. Very creative. Always uh, knit or not knitting. Crocheting. Crocheting and then, you know, making afghans. Uh, she would, of course, was very talented in the kitchen as far as I'm concerned. You know, very good cook. Mm -hmm. And so she's very creative in, in her way. E yeah. Each and every person has their own way to be creative. We were made in his image. You know, the father is the ultimate creator. He created all things. And when he created us, he created us in his image. So the word create in the very beginning in Genesis, it actually means to make something out of nothing. Now, we do not have that capability. No. We use that word very loosely, but that word means actually making something out of nothing. But he made us in his image, and we have the ability to be creative. So we can take that creativity gene, and we can use it in accounting, in cleaning a house, in organization, uh, selling cars, Whatever it is that you do, there are ideas that can, can come to you like creating food plots, mm -hmm. right? There's different well, things that you just, can do. Not just food plots, but just setting up a farm in general mm -hmm. to be able to manipulate the path 
mm-hmm. or the, the travel way of a deer and, uh, you know, make it a little bit, I'm not going to say, I get, make it a little easier for the hunter mm-hmm. in a sense, but, but at the same time, it's all about the, the deer. Creativity is a learned thing and it's also something that has to be practiced. So the more that you practice creativity, the more creative that you become. So that's what I love about doing the ATCs that we do, the artist trading cards. It's a little bit of mixed media, but it it allows you to stir up that creativity and think about things in a different way. Outside of the creation story, obviously that's the big creative um, expression that you see in the Bible. But outside of that story, there is another story that talks about artistry that act what we would assume is an actual artist like I never even when I first started painting furniture I didn't call myself an artist and now you know I'll say I'm a furniture artist and so because we have been told what an artist is and sometimes it's hard for people to understand that there's all different kinds of artistry but in the bible the first time that we see creativity in artistry is in um in exodus he was very detailed he told them exactly how to do it so we're going to go ahead and read that it's exodus 31 1 through 11 then the lord spoke to moses saying see i have called my name beazalel the son of uri the son of Hur, of the tribe of judah and i have filled him with the spirit of god in wisdom in understanding and knowledge and in all manner of workmanship to design artistic works, to work in gold, in silver, in bronze, in cutting jewels for setting, in carving wood, and to work in all manner of workmanship. And I, indeed, I have appointed with him Ahilab, the son of Ahishmach of the tribe of Dan, and I have put wisdom in the hearts of all the gifted artisans that they may make all that I have commanded you, the tabernacle of meeting, the ark of the testimony, and the mercy seat that is on it. And all the furniture and the tabernacle, table and utensils, the pure gold lampstands with all its utensils, the altar of incense, the altar of burnt offering with all its utensils, and the laver and its base, the garments of ministry, the holy garments for Aaron and the priest, and the garments of his sons to minister as priests, and the anointing oil and sweet incense for the holy place, according to all that I have commanded you they shall do. Artistry is a God-given gift and talent, and he was very specific. So he's talking about all of the workmanship that went into building the temple, from gold to you know all the metals to jewels to even sewing the garments. He considers that artistry, and he gave them the ability to be able to do it. So the wisdom, the knowledge, the ability. The, the you know he anointed their hands well, to their do eyes the thing. to see right. what others couldn't see exactly as well. because if we look at the word of god i mean it, i mean it is just down to the finessed detail right and how he wanted things exactly and so they were able just like the noah's ark and when you think about that that took amazing artistry and skillmanship and you know to be able to cut wood and and it had never been done before even in my own life like i found looking back when I was like, okay, where did this creativity take me? How did I get here? I dabbled in a lot of different things where other people may have looked at me like, you know, what is she doing? Like, does she even know what she's doing? Cause she's all over the place. But I realized that that's part of the creative mind and that there's nothing wrong with that. Cause sometimes you have to try different things and you, you get bored with something, you try something else. Um, and so there's no shame in that game. I know a lot of people that are like that. And the more that I talk to the creative people, like I realize we have all been on that same journey because we're trying to find exactly what fuels our soul. Now that I'm in this actual creative world, um, I've, I love it. And I learned so many different things and there's new techniques. There's different people that do it different ways. And you, you just gleaned from different people and it's just like what we talked about before that iron sharpens iron like you know you grow and you learn and you discover and it never ends and it's just like in his word like we have to remain teachable we have to always be open to learning new things whether it's in the natural or in the spiritual every chance that I get when I paint furniture 
I want to do a big reveal. And sometimes mm-hmm. you make fun of me for that. Sometimes I do. <laughs> Just but, because it's sometimes time consuming and I'm always on the go because I've got things to get done. Mm-hmm. And I'm, you know. But here's the thing you have to stop and celebrate. <clears throat> like it's part of what we need to do. You have to acknowledge what was done and you have to celebrate every milestone. So when someone asks me to paint furniture and they trust me to paint it my way and they've never seen it, maybe they've given me some color schemes or maybe they've given me a little bit more than that, they still remember what it looked like before and most people can't see what it will look like. They have a hard time seeing that. So for me, the big reveal is that huge moment where I'm going to be able to show them their grandmother's piece, their mother's piece in a whole new different way. And I tell them, go around the corner and close your eyes and I'm gonna, we're gonna bring it in. And we're usually rushing to bring it in, heavy piece of furniture, set it down. And then I'm saying, okay, come out and come out and look. And I usually record it and I usually add it into my videos on YouTube. Um, But it literally, fills me up. I love that process. I love seeing their expression for the very first time. Their expression, the tears in their eyes. Always, yes. You know, the the happiness, the joy that they have on their face, you know, that, you know, they appreciate and they just, even if it's an old piece that they had already that maybe it was passed down from family, Mm -hmm. then they appreciate it that just much more because not only are you refurbishing or, or revamping that piece, but you're actually uh, covering it to protect it, protect it you know, yeah. to prolong the life of it. So That's actually a really good point. Um, when I first started painting furniture, you know, I was painting like things that people were throwing away. It was no big deal. You didn't care. You thought, oh, you're doing a great job. But when it came to something of value, you struggled with seeing someone paint it. Like your father does not like to paint wood. But... Painting furniture is not a new thing. Like Marie Antoinette had painted furniture. Like you can go to, um, they have her house as a museum. You can go in there and you can see all of the painted furniture. So it's not a new thing, but we think that it is. And of course those weren't antiques, but they were still workmanship. There, there was, a, I mean, they were ornate. These pieces were very, right. very beautiful. But my paint does... Um, cover it and 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 moisturize it and protect that wood because it's not toxic so there's still some things that i'd rather see and stay <laughs> wood you know yeah. you got a pretty tiger wood cabinet or my victrola yeah or you know your you know an old bedroom suit so on so it doesn't forth, bother you know. me it does not so bother therefore me. i'm a wood lover and, yeah, you know, she's not so I know I actually love wood. I love mahogany. I love walnut I do love some I think you do have to have some wood in your house. There's a balance. There's a balance with everything, right? But I do yeah. I doesn't it does not bother me one bit to paint anything I will paint an antique. It does not bother me because I know I'm not hurting it but um, at the end of the process, you know getting from the ugly duckling to the transformed thing Sometimes it's not easy. Sometimes um, I might shed a tear or two, like just getting there. I get frustrated, like I messed something up or I realized the piece has more issues than what I thought it would have. And so it's taking me more time to fix it. But like we've talked about every single time, we can gain so much knowledge and wisdom from things in the physical to understand in the spiritual Mm -hmm. So as much as I love those big reveals, and I'll do it every single chance I can, when I look at the piece of furniture that I'm doing, and I'm trying to make it something, I realize that that piece of furniture can represent me. That piece of furniture can represent you. Every piece of furniture has a story. It's lived a life. It has a past. you know. And then there's some pieces of furniture that, you know, I can't get behind. Like maybe it's a client that wants me to do something. I and I, I procrastinate and I struggle with it because I don't like it. I don't. It's not my favorite thing, and my hands seem tied because I can't do what I would want to do. And so there's 
that balance as well because you know sometimes you just have to do what the client wants and it's not how I would do it but at the end of the day I still know that it's going to be so much better and so I have to sometimes stir myself up and like amp myself up like go ahead and just start it because I know once I start it I'm going to love it and I know it's going to come out good in the end but sometimes I do struggle with it. What was it you just said? You're talking about covering up the scratches and the blemishes and, you know, you're protecting it. That's just like God, mm -hmm. you know, sending his son is to cover us up in a, with a covering of the blood. Mm -hmm. And, and you know, sometimes we may cry mm -hmm. over the things that we're going through, but we have the grace and the mercy mm -hmm. because God will get us through that. That's right. A piece of furniture is just like one of us, broken, mm -hmm. abused, the scratches, the, the mildew, the, um, the nicotine. I mean, I have cleaned one of the worst pieces of furniture filled with nicotine, and I, it was just so disgusting. And I look at some of these pieces, and I am disgusted by it, or mm -hmm. I'm, I'm troubled that I have to... I don't even want to touch it sometimes because it's so dirty. It's so filthy. And feces all in it. I, bugs. Yes. Bugs. I've, I've cleaned out dead roaches and, you know, mouse droppings. And, you know, it's just all of the dirt and the filth, which could be, again, correlated to the world. You know, people who have made so many mistakes, who have gone astray who maybe have never been saved, never known the Savior, and they have so much baggage and so much damage, and they're so broken. And, you know, you might think, well, they're not worth redeeming because they're, you know, they're, they're just a terrible person or whatever. And you can look at that on the outside, but He created all people. He mm -hmm. loves every single one, no matter how dirty, no matter how broken. The thing is, everything that we go through is what makes us. It's what strengthens us. You know, uh, I wouldn't be who I am today had I not went through what I've went through in the past. I wouldn't be, I wouldn't have the strength that I have today in, in the Word had I not gone through the trials and tribulations that I have in the past. So, you mm -hmm. know, it, it, it makes us, you know. Exactly, it we'll, does. We'll come out on top as long as we're living for Him. You know, there's some pieces of furniture that, are covered in grime and dirt and soot and you know, who knows where it had lived and how many different barns and it's outside and it's just filthy and it looks like it's not worth anything and somebody wants to throw it away or maybe it's just a good piece of furniture that's been in this house but it's covered in oil because people use Murphy's oil or pledge and they just you know layer and layer and and let me just tell you, it's a no for me. As a furniture painter, me and my friends will talk to tell you, do not use that stuff on your furniture. I always <laughs> use pledge before you come on. I know, but and I did because I didn't know any better. But the thing is, all of that grime, all of that stuff has to get cleaned off in order to paint it. In order to, for me personally, to transform it. So some pieces of furniture, I have to strip it. I have to get down to the nitty gritty, to the raw wood. To be able to maybe restain that top and um, but or clean it really well, that's part of that preparation. Like you have, to, I have to clean, I have to sand, I have to take all of that grime off of it so that I could transform it. And it's just like us. We, it's not just about being saved. Like you have to acknowledge that you need to be saved, but you also have to be healed and delivered. You have to forgive and for and forgive yourself. Forgive other people that maybe have abused you and hurt you. Because some of the pieces of furniture, like I said, I'm in the middle of painting something right now that's been gouged and, you know, scratched up so deeply and abused. And, you know, I had to fill it all up, fill the holes up and paint it so that it would have a new life. And it's, it's just the same process. That is exactly what the Father does in mm -hmm. us and for us the good thing about that is where you're taking and you're covering those blemishes just like he covers our blemishes through the blood you know with the blemishes most people would say that that piece of furniture is devalued mm -hmm. okay 
But, yeah. But when we're when we're in Christ and we're covered by the blood, then we're more valuable. You're more in valuable. His eyes, yeah, because you know? he he sees our value. He mm-hmm. knows our potential. He knows our beginning from our end. He knows exactly what we're supposed to be. And the thing is, just a side note, if I paint something, it actually adds the value. <laughs> That's just perspective, right? Just like some people think that some people are not worth redeeming. We all are. Isaiah 64, 6 through 8 says, But we are like an unclean thing, and all our righteousness are like filthy rags. We all fade as a leaf, and our iniquities, like the wind, have taken us away. And there is no one who calls on your name, talking about the Father, who stirs himself up to take hold of you. For you have hidden your face from us and have consumed us because of our iniquities. But now, O Lord, you are our Father, we are the clay, and you are Mm -hmm. potter. And all of the work of your hand, in our best attempts to be good, to look good, to do good things, we are filthy rags. Why? Because our flesh is sin. We are all sinners. He is holy and he is truly good. And the only way we know what good is, is because we see it through his perspective, through his lens, reading his word. He takes this broken vessel and if we allow him permission, Mm -hmm. he is the great potter and he will create a masterpiece. Uh, He strips us of all the unclean things He cleans us up to be ambassadors, to be representatives of his kingdom. He redeems us so that we can walk confidently in him, secured in our faith. Once you have been redeemed, you have to live your life to thank him. Like You want to. Yes. You live as you should because he's redeemed you and he's done all these things. So you start thinking differently and you become a new creation. When I see that furniture being transformed, I can't help think about how far we've come. And I always look at that furniture and wonder, what's the story? Who are the people behind that furniture? Mm -hmm. Who built it? Who owned it? Like, what what were they like? You know, and I, I think about all of those things. And I actually pray as I paint, I pray for the people that are going to get this piece of furniture. I pray for the people who are going to, um, who asked me to paint it, or maybe it's just, you know, something that I am selling. I don't know who the person is that's going to buy it. I never know. Sometimes it sells right away. Sometimes it takes a little bit longer, but I know that he knows. And so I pray as I paint and I know that he can use those prayers to help those people, to bless those people. And the pieces of furniture become very, very um, important to me just because I know that he's going to use what I did to bless somebody and we're not supposed to hoard our savior we're supposed to tell everybody Mm -hmm. about it we're supposed to share the gospel share the story share that redemptive story um, so that everyone will know you know I never cover up every blemish I don't like to take an old piece of furniture and make it look brand spanking new that's not my style because I don't want to be I don't, I'm not going to make myself over into a fake version of me. I have wrinkles. I have stories. I have cuts and bruises that he has healed, but I don't want to hide all of that. I want to shine my light brightly so that when people see, wow, she was transformed. And if he did it for her, he's going to do it for me. And my testimony can encourage someone. Your testimony can encourage someone. Character, strength, just like I yes. said before, everything that we've been through uh, adds value, but adds, you know, uh, a learned lesson. And so therefore you can help guide others mm-hmm. through things that you've already been through. Yeah. But most importantly, you know, maybe you can help and lead someone to Jesus. And that's the main thing, right? To be mm-hmm. about our father's business, just like he was. And so bringing in people be- into the kingdom because we have been adopted Mm -hmm. and we have been engrafted into his kingdom, into his family. We want to bring in others. And that's what it's all about. Ephesians 2, 1 through 10 says, And you he made alive who were dead in trespasses and sins in which you once walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit 
who now works in the sons of disobedience, among whom also we once conducted ourselves in the lust of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature children of wrath, just as the others. But God, who is rich in mercy, because of his great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead in trespasses, made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved and raised us up together and made us sit together in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus that in the ages to come he might show the exceeding riches of his grace in his kindness towards us in Christ Jesus. For by grace you have been saved through faith, not that of yourself. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest anyone should boast. For we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. So the process of spirituality, of ment- of mentally, emotionally, going through all of that process of healing, it is painful, mm-hmm. like we said. It takes work. It's not easy. It's definitely a day-to-day thing. But once we surrender everything to him and allow him to shape and mold us into his image, mm-hmm. And we acknowledge that we are his workmanship. Like he wants to tell everyone and use us. Like, look at what I did in her. I can do that in you. Um, and we should feel that same way. When, when we transform spiritually, then, you know, we don't have, it's after the spiritual transformation that we have a mental transformation. And emotional. And it's emotional. all It's all in hand, right? So just like when I'm sanding down furniture and I'm stripping all, and I'm removing all of those layers like an onion, you know, you're peeling that onion and you're removing all of the layers to get to that root issue. Mm-hmm. That's when we can really become completely healed, restored, delivered. And so we um, have come to his saving grace, but because we live in a sinful world, we have to, you have to go through that healing process. You mm-hmm. have to be delivered from the world. You have to be transformed by the renewing of your mind. You have to, um, maybe you change where you live. Maybe you have to change who you hang out with. Maybe you have to stop watching television. There's different things, but he works that all out one by one. Mm -hmm. Um, When that happens, it's truly a remarkable thing. Okay. So, you know, there was a day where we served Satan and now we don't. Now we serve the the Most High God, mm-hmm. Yah Yahweh, the Creator of everything, and our lives are truly transformed, and people can see that. And so I hope that you will understand. Number one, you are created to to worship Him. You are creative, and you can do that um, in any different way that He's given you gifts and talents. You are redeemable. And if you have been redeemed, then let the redeemed of the Lord say so, right? We have to be bold and courageous and tell everyone what he has done in our life. So now we want to leave you with this. John three sixteen. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. And so we want to encourage you to seek him first, pray about everything, test the spirit, examine yourself. Are you in the faith? Ask yourself, ask yourself right now, are you in the faith? If you don't know what that means, then go ahead and ask us, send us a prayer request, send us your praise reports, send us your questions, and we would love to help you understand. All right, so in order to be saved, you recognize that you're a sinner, In need of a Savior, you ask Him to forgive you of your sins. The Bible calls us to repent and to turn from our wicked ways. Does that mean that you'll never sin again? No. No. (laughs) No, we're all sinners. But He's quick to forgive. And He teaches us all things. He leads us along the narrow path into righteousness. And that just means right standing with Him. That's right. So thank you for joining us today. I hope that this has been a blessing to you. Um, We would, again, love to hear from you, love to hear your feedback. This is on any podcast app. It's also on our local radio station at uh, 103.5 The Light every Monday at 4 p.m. 
It releases on a YouTube as well and on my website, lisaboondesigns.com. If you have asked him into your heart today, we would love to know it. Be sure to tune in every Monday for our weekly program, Boone in Woods and in the Home with Nathaniel and Lisa Boone. We hope that you have an incredibly blessed day. Follow our social media. Good day. Ciao.